Welcome to the voice of St. Anthony Parish from Alston, Massachusetts, right here on WROL, 9.50 a.m., 100.3 FM. And you can also hear us at catholicaudiomedia.com. That's catholicaudiomedia.com. Well, I want us to look at a few things this week, and I think it's important. So I'm going to do this in several segments, but I think it's important for us to understand something that is always a tension between the Christian community, certain members of the Christian community, particularly the Catholic community, or including rather the Catholic community, and of secular community. So we want to kind of look at that to have a better understanding uh, so that hopefully when this week is over, we have a little better understanding of how to address different issues. First of all, we'll start with the Catholic community. This is the month of June, and we are in an interesting week, as I've talked to you about. This is the 10th week. This is the 11th week, rather, of ordinary time, but we have just finished celebrating Pentecost. Then we're going to celebrate next Sunday, Holy Trinity, and the following Sunday, is the solemnity of the body and blood of Christ. And in the midst of that is a special Friday celebration of the Sacred Heart. So I want to talk about the Sacred Heart devotion for a minute. It's a devotion in the Catholic Church. It goes back uh, hundreds of years, close to almost 2,000. But it was especially uh, really put together very strongly after, according to St. Margaret Mary Alcock, she used to receive uh, regular visits, in a sense. She received, uh, from what I understand, um, tens of these visits from Jesus, asking her to promote what is known as the Sacred Heart Devotion. Now, to understand the Sacred Heart Devotion, one thing you may want to Uh, comprehend is if you've ever seen any kind of a paint painting or any kind of a card or even a statue of an image of Jesus with his heart on fire that that is the sacred heart devotion and that represents the sacred heart devotion and what is happening there is a presentation of the intense love that Jesus has for each and every one of us. And it's a tense love and mercy that Jesus is always calling us to his mercy, to experience his love, and he's doing that across the board to all people. And so that image is a reminder, is a call to experience Jesus' love and mercy. One of the things that we understand within the context of the teaching of St. Faustina is this is the time of his mercy, of Jesus' mercy. There will come a time of judgment, so we want to press the uh, teaching of love and mercy to as many people as we can find. So it is a time to spread his message of love and mercy. Now, St. Margaret Mary Alcock lived in the 1600s, so that's the 17th century. She was French, so these images came to her while she was a nun in France. And so they're very powerful images, and she helped to spread, to begin, and to spread that story of the, the intense love of Jesus. And remember, this is at a time that is building up a lot of um, issues that built up in France that eventually led to the French Revolution. So there's a lot of beginning of the breakdown of French society, and therefore that understanding of the need for this devotion for Jesus is going to be a stability, granted no one's thinking along these ways at the time, uh, during a time that ultimately will lead to intense political upheaval, which we see in the late 1700s continuing off until... Uh, the 1800s and and even today. So, uh, but there is that intense devotion, that call of St. Margaret Mary uh, to uh, let people know of this powerful devotion and that call that gets to to spread around the church, which she is strengthening the devotion. The devotion had gone on for, for a long time before that, centuries before that. In the late 
1800s. It was 1889 that devotion was raised by Pope Leo XIII, one of my favorite popes, Pope Leo XIII, to what is known as a first-class devotion. So it became a major devotion. It's a solemnity in the church. It's celebrated um, in June, and it's a very powerful devotion. Then um, Pope Leo XIII in 1899 called for a holy year, and the holy year was dedicated to the Sacred Heart. And you may see churches throughout, well, you will see churches throughout the area that is um, that are named for the Sacred Heart. One church, for example, happens to be Sacred Heart Church in North Quincy, Massachusetts, which is the home of the pastor there who is my classmate, my one and only remaining classmate in the priesthood. So anyway, that's my classmate who is there, but that's Sacred Heart North Quincy. I grew up in Weymouth, and my original parish was Sacred Heart in Weymouth, which, by the way, burnt down about uh, maybe 10, 15 years ago, and it's been rebuilt. But Sacred Heart, a parish, we eventually ended up going, if you're from the Weymouth area, to Immaculate Conception because my mother was handicapped and she couldn't make it up the stairs. So we used to go to Immaculate Conception because uh, it was easier to get into the church. We're going to talk more on the other side of the break. You're listening to the voice of St. Anthony Parish from Alston, Massachusetts, right here on WROL, 9.50 a.m., 100.3 f.m. And you can also hear us at catholicaudiomedia.com. That's catholicaudiomedia.com. We'll be right back. I want to call your attention to Catholic TV, which offers great faith-filled, family-friendly programming 24 hours a day. You can find your cable channel at www.getcatholictv.com, and you can watch online on the free apps or check out the YouTube channel. Daily Mass, Rosaries, the Divine Mercy Chaplet, and the Our Lady of Perpetual Help Novena are all available online and on demand. Check out CatholicTV.com. Now, uh, don't forget our own website, CatholicAudioMedia.com, as I told you. And uh, don't forget you have a standing invitation to come to our parish, 43 Holton Street in Alston, Massachusetts. Come by. Come to our parish at Mass. We have a 10 o'clock a.m. Mass on Sundays. We also have a daily Mass, 9 o'clock in the morning, and an evening Mass, 5.30 in the evening. So... If you want to come by, please do. And if you do come by, let me know. Say, hey, you know, uh, Father, I listen to you on the radio. People have done that. And I just want to let you know that that's why I'm here. So that's good. So now I'm talking to you about the Sacred Heart devotion. And so the devotion is a very powerful devotion that's reflecting the intense love that Jesus has for all of us, all of us who are in my listening audience, all of us around the world, this intense love that he wants us to spread that message and to send the message out and also to call people to the mercy of God. Now, one of the things that we're called to do is be mindful of the Lord. And so that's an important message. So come to experience the love of God. That's what the church is there for, to teach people of the love of God. And that's one of the things we're called to do, to to teach people of the love of God, but to let them also, in their prayer, come to discover the love of God so that they can share, share it with others. And that is through the sacred heart of Jesus. We come to comprehend this. And one of the things that you will find, which I have always supported, um, is what is known as the enthronement. And that is a special ceremony that's done in your house uh, where there is an enthronement of an, um, a picture of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Often the Sacred Heart of Mary re- reflects the same concept of mercy and love. And those are enthroned in people's houses and it's calls for devotion to Jesus and Mary in a house of prayer and everything else. We've gotten away from that over the past 50 years and maybe we need to get back to that. And if you heard my homily yesterday, you would see I'm calling people to a whole new concept of prayer and everything else. So anyway, it's coming to understand this powerful knowledge of the love of God and this powerful mercy of God. Now, I told you this is June, and what's happening is many people today are promoting this devotion during the month of June, and they're trying to encourage people to come to know this devotion. It's a powerful devotion. Now, the reason why they're doing it, we're going to discuss tomorrow, but it's a devotion that they're promoting during the month of June, and I think that's a great thing. 
We just need to understand the concept behind it. And if we understand that, then we can understand how powerful this devotion is. So we're looking at this devotion during the month of June, and it's really to help us to understand it, to appreciate the devotion. So you can look it up on the internet if you'd like, to deepen your relationship with Christ, to come to know a deeper understanding on the love of God, but it's also called to do so for those who don't understand those concepts, who maybe have an understanding of God as being someone who rejects them or who despises them. And people get these messages and they get them from bad teaching really bad teaching, and that really should not be the case. People who feel that they can't possibly be loved by God. Have I met people like that? Yes. Yes, in fact, I have. So uh, this is a powerful devotion to spread this month, and it's a devotion for people to understand because so many people get the message that they are rejected by God, that God wants nothing to do with them, and say, well, where does this come from? We're going to talk a little bit about that tomorrow from a whole different perspective. We're not going to talk about the devotion. We're going to talk about a secular reality, and then we're going to, I'm going to talk about how those two are uh, actually paired by accident. So we're going to talk about that. We'll talk about that on Thursday. In the meantime, you're listening to the voice of St. Anthony Parish from Alston, Massachusetts. Thank you for joining us. We'll be back tomorrow at three o'clock in the afternoon. And if you want to hear more of how you can support our program, that'll be coming up in about 20 seconds. But in the meantime, remember, have yourself a blessed day. You're invited to our church. Come by at St. Anthony in Alston and pray for us as well. If you would like to support our program, please consider a donation to St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts. There are several ways to consider this. One is to purchase any of our merchandise, which you can find at the shopping tab at catholicaudiomedia.com. That's catholicaudiomedia.com. There are coffee mugs there. There's also my latest book, Encounter Christ in Your Humanity, all of which you can find at the shopping tab at catholicaudiomedia.com. You can also donate to the show directly through either the Donate tab, also at catholicaudiomedia.com, or by sending a donation through the U.S. Postal Service with your questions and comments at 43 Holton Street, Alston, Massachusetts, 02134. That's St. Anthony Parish, 43 Holton Street, Alston, Massachusetts, 02134. Finally, the best way you can support our parish is to attend Mass on Sundays at 10 o'clock and be a part of our parish. We thank you for any support you would like to give to St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts, the sponsoring parish for this media outreach to Catholics and other Christians in the WROL, WEZE, and podcast listening audience. In Cristo vivimos.